During this hour-long Ankama Live, which I've translated to English, you can watch it here, Ankama announced the arrival of Season 2 of Expeditions. This is an unusual event, the likes of which we've only ever seen once, and this is the second coming of it. Well, the stats at Ankama headquarters show that 60 to 70% of the player base is level 160 and above, so they've designed a little something special to treat them over the next two months. While the one hour recording is up as I said, today we will have a short summary of the whole thing and will aim to answer as many questions as possible in doing so. Expedition now, what are they? This man is the most... In essence, it is an event that comes to the office once a year. The first edition was last year, and now the second one has already started. If you open your achievement tab or press the asterisk to go there directly, you should be able to see the tab that explains them in... Uh, French? Alright, oh, yeah, they forgot to translate the explanation of it. <laughs> so it's still the same one from last year. They also forgot to translate the dialogue with the main NPC at Astrobe Zap. The main mobs in the dungeons as well. Anyway. This person has brought it up to their attention on the forum, and they have responded. But aside from that, it's all fine. And this is why I'm making this video here today. What is it though? Last year we've had to pick two idols and run a bunch of dungeons twice with varying levels of difficulties. This year, however, the difficulty was coded into 20 of the original dungeons ever created themselves without the need for any idols, because you guessed it, idols are no longer part of the game. So, the event does not require you to have any special items or speak to any NPC to start it. All you got to do is head over to the dungeon, speak to the NPC and pick the option that mentions expeditions. It's usually at the very bottom. You can do them at any level, but you've got to be level 180 and above in order to accept the achievements and participate in the event properly. This is by design, to give people who are far away from early dungeons the opportunity to go back and rediscover them, but with a twist, as we will see. The difficulty, first of all, is scaled to level 200. And on top of everything they already do, the bosses, the spells, mechanics and everything else, they have chucked in a couple more mechanics per dungeon for us to discover ourselves. I hear you thinking it. What do lower level people get out of this? Well, nothing. Ribeck, the lead developer behind the event, described it this way. The lower level player base has the entirety of the game to discover. Plenty more to go there. So, quick rundown of some of the things you need to know. The event starts from the 30th of April to the 25th of June, so you have the best part of two months to get this event finished. After the initial release of the three bosses, every Friday we get two new bosses, and every Monday another one will be added. The event ends on the 25th of June, meaning doing bosses no longer gives you the achievements that count towards the event. The event itself will stay in our tabs to check and claim rewards from until September, so you have plenty of times after the event is finished. The activation calendar looks like this, and everything is up on our Discord server. Some key things to know before you head there. You need an actual physical key because the bunch of key will not grant you entry to the event version of the dungeon. Some dungeons will have one room only, but most of them will have two. First one to ease you in, and then the boss fight. You will not be able to validate any of the normal dungeon achievements by doing them in this variant. No, you cannot access all the rewards early, you have to wait until all the dungeons are released in phases in order to do them. This is by design. Bosses will have special mechanics we don't know yet about. Although, they have teased Moon and Moo Wolf how they will work, and you can hear all about it in this video right here where I've translated the entire Ankama Life. The dungeons are designed like normal with the standard of 4 mobs that scale up to 8 depending on your team size. Yes, you can use sidekicks. Yes, you can TP outside of the dungeon. No, you can't place a preceptor in the rooms in order to farm resources. Yes, you get drops, but only the ones you'd get from doing the dungeon normally. Nothing new or special. Yes, we already figured out the mechanics of the first three and posted all about them on our Discord server, links in the description. Some of you will have noticed three dungeons with mazes behind them in order to access the boss room. These, thankfully this time, will be cut short, so the entry to the dungeon will be granted without having to go through any mazes. There is a free tier of rewards rewards that everyone gets, composed of a full cosmetic set, 20 badges and loads of awesome consumables. These badges are linked to the account and can be used to buy cosmetics from Tokka Gecko, 
who by the way has changed location to live in the Ashrub Zap permanently now. There is a paid tier that can be unlocked by purchasing a medal which gives you some more cosmetic sets and extra badges to buy them with. These badges can be used to buy the Tokagako and other sets from last year's expeditions. There is one exception, the mercenary set that you saw me wear in the thumbnail is not up for sale. The lead developer said that they do not discount the possibility of adding them later on in future iterations, but nothing is certain. Yes, the medals are a sort of battle pass. No, it's not pay to win because you're only getting cosmetics which offer no distinct advantage in the game. Cosmetics on the free tier are linked to the account forever. The ones on the pay tier however are linked only for 6 months and can be sold later on if that's what you want to do with them. Yes, you can buy more than one medal and the badges you get from them can be used to buy more cosmetics from last year. You can buy the medals using your country's currency or all greens. Check the shop. Some offers include subscription days for those of you who have been away for a while and need a little incentive to return and do this event. All of them include the medal that lets you unlock all the paid tier of the cosmetics. Yes, you should be able to do the entire event and then decide at the end of it whether you want the paid tier or not. And once you purchase it after finishing the whole thing, you should be able to retrospectively gain all the rewards. Once the event ends on the 25th, the tab still remains until September to let you redeem, buy the pass and get all your cosmetics out of there. The cosmetics are camo, chameleon, that means they adapt to your color, but some of them are also levitinum, which means they can be upgraded to level 2 and has another distinct look to it, like this hat in particular. This year around there are no haven bags and no more rewards than you can already see in there. The mercenary set which you see me wear in the thumbnail is not buyable at Tokageko this year sadly. Expeditions 3 are in the plans for next year but they will decide on them depending on player feedback. I think we've covered pretty much all of the questions I have seen asked in the discord and elsewhere. Just in passing I do stream my adventure on Twitch and in the last live we did the first three dungeons released live and discovered the mechanics all together with chat and then shared it on the best English community discord server afterwards. All the links will be in the description. For those of you who stuck this far, I thought why don't we add a little golden nugget from the developer conversation that I've translated the other day that you might have missed. Uh, the most essential points that they've covered were Dofus 2.72 version will drop in June after three weeks of beta testing. That's a long time. Sadida and Ekaflip are seeing major revamps. Feka and Fogonaut are a bit too strong. Fogonaut especially in PvP, so those will get tooled just balance nothing major changing about how they are as classes now the only thing they mentioned about unity is one really exciting thing they've tested and like the new end of screen which contains a lot more statistics like total damage dealt total heals given and other cool ones they didn't mention the wakfu style hero mode which lets you move all of your characters from just one is currently being tested to see and assess feasibility more communication will be uh, given us about that once they reach a conclusion. The forum is getting a lot of love, it should change very soon. Last thing, some people had their Temporis Potion XP reset to zero. After this bug, they've decided to fix it for most and some are still affected. All you have to do is contact them and they will restore the XP on the potion for you to use however you like. I wish you the best of courage with your expeditions this year and hope to see you around either on the next live or on the Discord to share your results with us. Having said that, thank you very much for watching. Peace. Three out of three on day one. Let's go!